I think in terms of the concentrations of each of these inks, uh, they were much higher than what you might encounter in a lot of tissue engineering studies. So for the collagen ink, we were printing at 24 megs per ml. And for the cells, we were printing at around 300 million cells per ml, which is ridiculously high, but we thought that was necessary to recreate that highly dense, highly concentrated uh, environment that cells are in inside our body. Yeah, and, and to your point, 300 million cells per, per mil is a lot to, to other bioinks where people are one, maybe even two orders of magnitude lower than that, but it is getting closer to what it is actually native in the body where you're looking at roughly ballpark of a billion per milliliter. So there's, there's still a gap and it, even though you're printing, essentially you're printing a cell pellet, which is really cool. Right. Um, and even then there's still a little bit of density difference between that and native tissue. Um, but something else, aside from just basically printing a cell pellet, um, the whole thing that was enabled by this was how Fresh allows for different and more chemistries to be printed, where it wasn't just cells there. I think was there's some fibrinogen in there and yeah. collagen is really difficult to print with traditional techniques. Can you talk about why Fresh allows you to print both of those things together? Yeah, I think uh, if I just elaborate more on these inks. Uh, so first we had a pure collagen ink that was 24 megs per mil. So that was kept inside a syringe. That was an acidic bio ink. So acidic collagen ink because collagen is soluble in, in acidic conditions. And the way that collagen gels is via a temperature sensitive, is via a temperature system and also uh, a buffer base, well, a pH driven system. So when you neutralize collagen from acidic to a neutral condition, uh, you are able to drive gelation of collagen. And also similarly, when you raise the temperature of collagen to around body temperature, which is around 37 degrees Celsius, you also encourage some of that gelation uh, of collagen. And so that's one of the inks. Uh, and then the second ink was, a, was cells containing fibrinogen, like you said, um, if you imagine just kind of extruding out a cell pellet, so basically a lot of cells packed in together into a solution, the cells will, after you extrude them, they'll just kind of fall apart. And when you melt away the support material that, we, that we're using for fresh, uh, cells will just flow everywhere. They won't stay in the places that we want them to stay in. So, so the fiber engine really was there to hold everything in place. And the way we gelled this fiber engine was we added thrombin into our support material. And so what happens is that when you extrude this cell plus fibrinogen solution into our support material, the fibrinogen gets cleaved into fibrin, and that's the mechanisms by which it gels, is that thrombin cleaves that fibrinogen. And then this trace amount of fibrinogen really holds the cells in place so that you end up with these filaments of cells and also three-dimensional structures of cells that you printed. So uh, I think really the key there is modulating or tuning the support material or the liquid phase of the support material. So what we did was that we had a buffer, uh, a pH neutral buffer to gel the collagen as it's being printed. And then also within the su same support material, we had thrombin to gel the fibrinogen and cell solution as it's being printed. And that's, that's kind of how we were able to print two materials at the same time with very distinct gelation chemistries. And that's something I think not a lot of techniques out there can do or not that, not ones that I'm aware of. Yeah, I think uh, the short end that we summarize is that Fresh just allows for new chemistries to be printed where you're printing something that yeah. in the, is, one ink is pH sensitive, the other one is enzymatic. Um, I think the, the best attempts people were trying to do that in open air was just kind of spraying them with those solutions. But it, at least with, with Fresh, you're, you're printing into those and they're ubiquitously exposed.